Good evening. I thought I'd give you an update on where we are at in the argument in favor of Christianity and the Bible. And, you know, this may be the last argument that I can make um, in favor of Christianity and the Bible, which is this. People, and I did this from the very beginning, first time I ever heard about the book, the Bible, so I said, well, that book's been altered. That book's been changed. How do we know this book is the correct version? You get all these people that have all these new versions of Christianity and new gospels of Christianity are appearing all the time. And, you know, uh, you know the Mormons came up with a new version of Christianity. The Jehovah's Witnesses came up with a new version of Christianity. The Muslims came up with a new version of Christianity. The Jews uh, came up with the Talmud. And came up with a version of Christianity in the Talmud that described Jesus a certain way. So all these different religions and different groups um, came up with new versions of Christianity. Um, because they were confused by the subject. And part of Christianity has been, do we have the correct documents? Do we have the originals? How do we know if we have the originals? So what everybody wants is the original copy for them to look at themselves and make a determination, is this religion correct? What are we missing here? And so I'm going to tell you how you get the original copy. You go outside and you look up in the sky. And that's your original copy. Okay? So, so to say it succinctly, because I'm arguing with somebody about this, I can tell you that the Bible is a written copy of the stars in heaven. The Bible is a written copy of the stars in heaven. So stargazers looked up into the heavens, saw the stars passing over year after year in a certain pattern, and wrote a story about it. Um, this is why you always have an original copy of the Bible. Now, there's three factors um, that help you understand Christianity and the Bible, both the Old Testament and the New Testament. And it's not really the Trinity, but it's, it's, it's three factors. And those three factors are the Creator, God, and God's Word, which is the light Okay, so there's three things there. There's a physical light. There's God's word, which is a light. It's like a light. You see, it's like a light. So the word is like a light. So God's word that, that guides you is like a light. It's like the sun. It's like a, what, what, you know, what is it? It's like a, a beacon with like a, a lighthouse with a, with a light shining out so you know where the rocks are. It's just, it's a, but, but it's a light that guides you on the right path. So you could say, because this is all philosophy. If you don't understand the philosophy, then you don't understand the Bible or do I have the right copy or has this one been altered or changed? So let's, before we get into that, there's three things you have to know about to understand the Old Testament and the New Testament. And I don't, this isn't, the, the, this isn't, this has nothing to do with the Trinity uh, that, that was like explained based on, you know, Genesis 126 or whatever. We're not going to get into that. This is just three factors that if you understand these three factors, you'll understand the whole Bible. And those factors are one, light, a physical light is, is like, or is a metaphor for, God's light, which is God's word, which guides you. And that word, of course, is the truth. Uh, and it's just the truth is God's word, or the truth is what should guide you. Do you understand that? It's not, it's not a, a man writing something down. That's not what we're talking about. And this is what confuses people. They say, how do you know the, the Bible is the word of God? But we're not going to go into that yet. I want you to stick with this, these three factors first. Number one. That the word of God, or the truth, is like a light. So it's like a physical light. So it's, it's, the metaphor is a physical light and the word of God. Okay, And that this is the, how you understand God. Is that God is associated with the truth. Do you understand? So God's associated with the truth. Not associated with anything else but the truth. 
and that this uh, truth could be understood in physical terms as a light, as a physical light. So, I'm sure you, you understand that. It's not complicated. But those are three factors in understanding God. God, God's Word, and the light, the physical light, which is a metaphor for God's Word. So those are three factors. Now, here, this maybe this will help. Can you see that? God, the Word, let there be light in the sun. That piece of paper is kind of messed up otherwise. <laughs> because it's got some oil on it, and it's got some... It was my, my cup of tea was sitting on it. But, okay, so you understand. Now, here's the thing. Is the Bible the Word of God? Well, of course it is. Of course it is. And you'll see this very clearly. That if the Bible was written by stargazers, who are telling a story about God's Word, which is the light, which is the truth, which is what they want guiding them. They want to be guided by the truth. They want to be guided by God's Word. So God's Word is the truth, and that's what guides them. Okay, and that and that the stars in the sky are telling a story, which they're translating the, the stars into a story. So let me, let me put it this way: Stargazers looked up in the sky and wrote down a story based on the lights in the sky, and it tells a story about the light, about the sun, and about the twelve. About the sun and the twelve. The sun and the twelve are in the sky. There's also seven lights. So there's six lights plus the sun, which gives you seven, right? And there's twelve signs, or, or there's, there's twelve tribes of the zodiac, uh, plus the sun, plus God, which gives you, uh, well, that's twelve, that's thirteen. So there's 7 and 13, and then there's 6 and there's 12. I don't want to get too complicated. I'm not into numerology. I'm just saying. Let me, let, me, let me make this real simple for you. The stars go across the sky. That tells a story. That story, somebody watches that go over the sky over and over again. They're out, you know, husbandry. They're out with their animal husbandry, where, where you're raising animals, right? So they're out looking at the stars, and they're writing down stories about the stars, and they're beautiful stories, and they're amazing stories, and they're these amazing allegories of whatever is, you know, on their mind at the time, and, 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 and as far as what they're seeing in the sky, and they're writing it down. So it's literally the, the, the stars and heavens are the foundation of the Bible writing. It's the foundation of the book is the stars in heaven. So, so the book is literally based on the word of God, which is light. You see, the light in the sky is a metaphor for the guiding word of God, the light of God, which is not a, not a physical light. So well, these people that say, you know, if, if, you think, if you think that it's a physical light, then you're confused. It's it's a physical light in the sky is a metaphor for God's word, which is a light for you, because the truth lights your path, and it's it's a guiding light for you is to stick on stay on the path of truth and righteousness and justice and doing what is right. You see, so it's your guide. The truth is 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 the light. The light is the word of God. The king of Judah killed at the skull on the Passover. <laughs> so this is what the story is about. So it's about the stars in the sky. It's about the sun in the sky. Um, and that's just a fact. And it's not just the New Testament or the, or the Gospels, because Noah's Ark is about the sun in the sky. Um, you know, Joshua carrying the golden ark of the covenant across the River Jordan on the Passover is about the sun in the sky. So these are stories based on the heavens written or, or, or made you know made into stories in a book which teach you about the light of God which is the truth so the book is literally based on the heavens it's literally based on now if you think of a piece of paper or a tablet like a clay tablet like they had in the old times before they had paper but either you can think of it as a piece of paper with ink on it of words made you know made from ink or a tablet made of clay 
with a stylus, which they you know put little marks on there, or a piece of stone with little um, indentations on it of, of letters, the sky can be thought of in the same way as a tablet with God's words on it. Do you understand that? So, so, so when you look up in the sky and you see the sky and you see the stars, well, the sky is the tablet and the stars are God's word. Those are his words. His words are the lights. The lights in the sky are the words. And they're going over in a pattern, and that pattern tells a story, and that story was written down by the ancient Israelites who were stargazers and into a story about God. And, and, and it's, it's, it's God, the creator, the word of God, and then as a light in the sky, that which tells the story of the, the word of God. So the, the lights in the sky are translated into the word of God. I think you understand what I'm saying. Okay, good. You understand. You're smart. Um, so what else is there for me to say? Um, that's about it. So there's... There's the lights in the sky. So now there's different stories. I mean, we can go over. I don't want to go over all of them, and I haven't gone through every single one. And and not everything in the Bible. Understand, not every book in the Bible is about the sun and the stars and the, and the calendar. But that's what that's what I'm trying to put together here, though, is that the Bible is based on the calendar. Unless if you want to call it the zodiac, let's call it the calendar. The calendar year is what the Bible is based on, the calendar year. The stars going across the sky through the calendar year, year after year after year, is the story of the Bible. That is the story of the Bible. But that's not the only thing in the Bible. There's also, um, there's the prophecies of Isaiah and Jeremiah and all these different people, and, and there's like prophecies in the Bible from the Israelites, and there's... Um, there's Proverbs in the Bible, which is not based on the heavens and the stars. Uh, and there's, uh, so there's, there's other books. There's Job, you know, there's other books that are not solely based on the, uh, you know, the changes of the, the, the stars, the motion of the heavens. Uh, but there are many that are, okay? Uh, one obvious example is Noah's Ark, which, is, which follows the calendar year. And so Noah's Ark is the sun through the calendar year and the, and, and the and how the sun comes up and it rises up uh, from the second month of now oh here's an interesting thing so in the calendar year of the old year the month of the uh, uh, this the month of the spring equinox was like the number was the was the month of basically it was called Nisanu and that was the month where everything starts but it starts raining. The flood starts in what's called Ajaru, and I don't know what the I don't know exactly what that means, but Ajaru is when it starts, and then it goes through the goes through the calendar, and then the last month of the calendar is Adaru. So there's some I don't know what those words mean because I don't know the entire Akkadian Babylonian language. I know some of the words, like well, I'm not going to go into it, but I know some of the words, but I don't know many of them, but. Um, so the so Ajaru is the beginning and Adaru is the where it ends. And so the so what I'm saying is the story of Noah's Ark goes through the calendar year. It starts with spring, the the the, the ark rises up into summer, and then it lands on Mount Ararat in um, in autumn. So it goes from spring, summer, autumn, and then it comes and then the water recedes from December until February, and they come out of the ark. So it's one calendar year. So it's about the sun going through its cycle. Um, another one that comes to mind is the story of Esther, because Esther is the same name, basically, as Ishtar, and Marduk is the same name as Mordecai, and so Mordecai and Esther are Marduk and Ishtar. And Marduk, I believe, is associated with Jupiter, and Ishtar is, of course, associated with um, Venus. So it's a story of lights in the sky. And, um, you know, I don't know exactly, I don't know the whole story of Esther. I'm just saying that's another example. Joshua carrying the ark from east to west across the Jordan River is an example of the Passover on in spring. So that's another example of the story of the stars. So that's what I'm trying to say is that the Bible, the Bible is a written 
copy of the stars in heaven. Um, that's what it is. That's why you have an original. Everyone has an original. It can't be burned. It can't be damaged with water. It can't be torn up. It's out of the reach of man. No man can take away our Bible. Okay, it cannot be destroyed. It's up. It's up in the sky. It's in the stars. It's there forever to be viewed. Um, the first time I had this realization, and it, it was actually with the Egyptian books, when I realized that the Egyptian books were entirely within my grasp, and I didn't even need to go buy them. I just had to go outside and watch the moon. The moon month after month after month after month after month after month. That's the entire story of the Egyptian religion. And, and, and the names change over time, okay? The names of the gods in the Egyptian religion are constantly changing. But, the, but you, you can see who, what name symbolizes the object. It, it's, it's all playing out on the moon. And, and, the, and the main, the main uh, forces are the moon, and then the, the sun god and the god of darkness are, are, are engaged in battle, which takes place on the moon. And then there's, so you have the moon as, as, as a deity or as a symbol in nature. And then you have the sun as a symbol and darkness as a symbol. And you've got, then above that you have Thoth, which is where you get the word Thoth, thought, I'm sorry. And of course he manages this balance between darkness and light that goes on for eternity. So that story can't be destroyed. It just, it's, it's not, man cannot get rid of that story. It's going to take place. And you can't stop it. And you can't stop uh, the Bible. You cannot destroy the Bible because it's, it's, it's taking place in the heavens for anyone to go see. So what I'm saying is you have an original copy. You have an original copy. And all these people that say, I found a new copy and Jesus was really a man. And he, had, he, he got married and then they went and lived in France. That's all nonsense. That's all nonsense. Those are not the originals. <laughs> the original is in the sky. That's why Jesus... He's the light of God. So, so when I say Jesus is the light of God, that doesn't mean I worship the sun. It's a metaphor. The sun represents, well, the sun is a light. And light represents God's word, which is the truth. And, and so Jesus, and that's why Jesus' life is portrayed as the life of the sun being killed by the Jews, the rabbis, killed by the rabbis in the Passover, and then rising up. For 40 days into summer. Do you understand that? That's why Jesus is killed on the Passover. And he, and he, and he, and he continues to teach for 40 days. That's, it takes him 40 days to get to, to heaven. Which is up, up in the sky. So that's the sun in the sky. But it's also the word of God. Because it's, the sun in the sky is a symbol for the word of God. Which is the light of God. The word of God is the light of God. And that's what... When, when you understand that the word of God is the truth and that's the light of God, that takes you directly to God. Now you've, now you've discovered the true God is the God of truth. So the light in the sky, being a metaphor for the truth, takes you to, is, is your gateway to the, to the true God. And now you know exactly what God is. He's associated with the truth, which is something you can only sense through your soul and your conscience and you as a spiritual being. That's the only place you can sense that. And so you've achieved... Mystical unity with the divine, which is what the old mystics were trying to achieve. Did they do it? I haven't seen any of them do that. Uh, you're certainly not going to find that in Freemasonry, I guarantee you that. I don't want to get into Freemasonry, but it's about compartmentalizing people. It's about compartmentalizing people. It's a Jesuit, it's a Jesuit um, order construct about compartmentalizing people, keeping them compartmentalized. Anyway, I'm not going to get into that. So the freedom, though, is in knowing that the truth is, is where you find God, and that when you worship the truth, you are connected to the absolute true God, the God of everything, the, 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 the true God that created the universe and, and, is, and is connected to your soul and in all of it. So it's all right there. You've got all of it right there. Is there anything else I need to speak about? I, okay, the last thing I'll just say, just because I brought up Esther and Mordecai. So that's why in, in um, the original Israelite religion, they had seven, a seven-candle menorah. If you notice, the Talmudists now have a nine-candle menorah, 
And I don't want to I don't want, I don't want to sit here and harp on the Talmudists, okay? But I'm just saying, there was no nine candle menorah. It has nothing to do. What is that? <laughs> Where'd you get that thing? You see what I mean? It has nothing to do with anything. The seven candle menorah represents the seven main lights in the sky: the sun, the moon, Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn. With the sun, and then the the other six, which gives you seven. Okay, that's all I'm gonna that's all I'm gonna talk about because I don't want this to run too long. And uh, that's it. Have a great night. Thank you.